Okay, so we had already talked about isotopes, where your protons and uh, where the number of neutrons can be different, right, within atoms of the same element. But here's a new term. An ion is when you have equal numbers of protons and electrons, right? Normally, we just said that protons and electrons are the same, normally. But there are lots of times where atoms will either gain or lose electrons. So you need to think about what charges are involved. The protons are positive, the electrons are negative. So and if an electron is lost or gained, then your atom either becomes more positive or less positive. Okay, so if an atom gains electrons, remember that electrons are negatively charged, then it becomes negative. Uh, the term for negative ion is anion because the prefix an means without or bad. If an atom loses electrons, if something loses a negative, it be, ends up being positive. Okay, and that's what we call a cation. And you can remember this because Think about what you know about cats. Cats are positive. So a positive ion is a cation. Okay? Well, that's actually how you spell positive. Right. So what's the charge on a potassium ion with 18 electrons? Okay, so what you have to do first, you've got to find potassium. What's the atomic number on potassium? 19. If it has a positive, or they're asking us for their... Um, What's the charge? Okay, so right this way, I guess 19 positives, 18 electrons. What does that equal? 19 positives and 18 negatives. Plus one. So the charge is plus one. And the charge is written in the corner of the symbol. One positive, one plus. I guess we don't really need, you will see symbols written without the atomic numbers. We don't really need the atomic number. The important thing right now is what the charge is. Okay, let's try another one. Sulfur. Find sulfur. What's the atomic number on sulfur? 16 protons. And so they're saying that this sulfur here has 18 electrons. What is the overall? Negative two or two minus, right? So the symbol, you write with S with a two minus in the corner. So really all you're doing is you're adding them up and whatever's left over, that's what the charge is. Okay, so let me give you a couple more examples. Um, let me do it up here. Find the charge. So if we have aluminum with 10 electrons, if we have oxygen with 10 electrons. Write the symbol for those two ions. I need time for number first.
Okay. You can tell me the, char the symbol and the charge for the first one. Anyway. Michelle, you got the first one? Right. Aluminum has 13 protons. If it has 10 electrons, then the, the outcome is plus 3, right? So this charge is 3 positive. All right, what about oxygen? Say again? Yep, O2 minus. Not too bad, right? Okay. So uh, in case you're wondering, there is a limit as to what the charge can be. Right? So I've shown you examples of plus 1, minus 1, plus 2, minus 2, plus 3, minus 3. So realistically, the highest this could ever, you're ever going to see is plus 7. That's like the most you'll ever see. Right? The most common charges are going to be the 1s, 2s, 3s, plus and minus. Okay? And again, there's reasons for that, but we'll get into those later. Okay. So remember how I said on the periodic table, the atomic numbers are averages. So these atomic numbers are actually calculated based on isotopes. So if, if you look here, silicon has three different isotopes. <laughs> First one we call silicon 28, then the second one silicon 29, third one silicon 30. All right, so these are the mass numbers. Now, the exact mass, like these numbers here, we, when we write them this way and the symbols, these, these are rounded to the nearest whole integers, but the exact masses are here. Okay, so if we look closely, the first isotope weighs as much, that occurs 92.21% of the time. So what that tells us is that this is by far the most common. And I'm basing that off of this. If you were to take a shovel and scoop up some silicon atoms, 92.21% of them will be this isotope with this weight. And the second one only occurs 4.7% of the time. The third one occurs even less than that, 3.09% of the time. So when we calculate the average mass, this method is what's called the weighted average. And what that means is that these it, we form categories that are weighted. You guys know how like in your classes, a lot of your classes will have weighted categories. Like in this class, there's the test and quiz category, and then there's the classwork category. Okay, so if you got 50% average in one, 50%, you know, and like 100% in your homework, you know, your average for the class is not simply an average of those two numbers. They're scaled differently. So this is how we do this. We're going to take the mass, the first mass, and we're going to multiply it by what its abundance. A stands for abundance. We're going to take the second mass and multiply it by its abundance. And then the third mass, and multiply it by its abundance. But the abundance should be in decimal form. So I'm going to add a page here so I have enough room to work. I'll show you what that means. Okay, so watch. The first mass, 27.9769. 92.21, I want to use that in decimal form. So all of those percentages, you divide them by 100% because we need them in decimal form. So 9221. Okay. And if we calculate... We're going to get... Two five point seven nine seven four nine nine four nine. Okay, now the second number two 
28.9765 times, what's 4.7% in decimal form? In decimal form? Kayla? Yeah, right. Okay, and likewise with the third, 29.9738 is 0 0.0309. All right, so I have carried out this calculation for each of my isotopes. In this case, there were three isotopes, that's why I did this three times. Sometimes you're going to have two isotopes. Sometimes you're going to have four. Okay. It doesn't matter how many isotopes there are. Just do it for however many there are. Now, these, these are subtotals. So what do you do with subtotals? You add them. But you got to remember where you're coming from with sig figs. I just carried out multiplication, all right? I didn't round them yet. But now my next operation is going to be addition. So now I am stopping my first operation type and entering into a second operation type. But whenever we do that, we have to round the number according to the rules of the operation we just finished. So in the first example, I got six sig figs times four sig figs. This number, before I add it, must be truncated down to four sig figs. So that's going to be 25 point. If I drop that seven, what number do I have left? Eight zero, right. The second number, one, two, three sig figs times six. This number here will have three. 1.36. Point oh three oh nine. That's three sig figs also. So this will end up being point nine two six. Okay. Those are the numbers that I will add. And the calculator is going to tell me twenty eight point oh eight six. But you should know your rules for adding. You cannot keep the thousandth place because not all of these numbers have a thousandth place in common. So 28.09. Find silicon on your periodic table. What's the atomic mass? This is how that number was determined. This calculation was carried out for each of these elements, and that's why the number on your periodic table for the atomic mass is a decimal value. So let's take a step back, get some perspective on here. Are you guys okay with understanding that for every element, there's different isotopes of that element, right? Some, ice, some elements have two isotopes, some have five. However many there are, doesn't change how this operation is carried out. You take the mass of the isotope, the exact mass of the isotope, you multiply it by the abundance in decimal form, you get a bunch of subtotals, and you add them up. And the nice thing about this is you can always check on the periodic table to see if you did it right. How are we doing? Okay. So... Um, let's pause here before we do the last part.